Hey guys, welcome to Art and Soul with Heather. Today, I'm so excited because it's another day to do some more fluid art fun. But today I'm going to do some swipe art. I've done a little bit of swipe art before. Um, I didn't post any videos as I was doing it just because I had so much other distractions going on, you know, which is life. Um, and I just, I don't want that in the middle of, um, you know, my painting with you. So today is going to be a great day for that. But today I'm not going to do just traditional swipe art that you typically might see um, amongst other paint pourers and stuff. Rather, I'm going to try to incorporate a little tree um, using painting knives um, um, while we're doing it. And I've, I've had some, I've used my painting knives a couple of times, but nothing like I will be today. So I'm, that's what makes me really kind of nervous but excited at the same time because I'm really just anxious to see how it's gonna turn out and I want to share my experience with you. But before we get started, I wanted to, of course, share a little ministry snack with you before we get started and it comes today, or today it comes from the book of John, chapter 15, verses um, 12. Actually, one verse, 12. Anyway, so it reads, this is my commandment that you love one another as I loved you. My gosh, guys, that that's, for me, that's really heavy because it's really hard to want to love people. It's so easy to just judge people and hate them and be angry and bitter towards them, um, especially because we, we we all fall short in realizing that we're all sinners. And then when we sin differently, we tend to judge others based on their types of sin rather than realizing, hey, we are, as a whole, we are all broken. And so we need to recognize that more and realize that God loves us unconditionally no matter how broken, how icky, how screwed up in the mind we are, or in the heart we are, because he is always trying to grab our attention and show us how much he loves us. Um, and that's how he wants us to see each other, is that how he sees and loves us. Like I said, it's really, really hard, but if we can do something this year, let's all try to work on loving each other a little bit more. All right. Okay. I'm full. That was a good snack. So let's get started. Okay guys, if you've seen my fluid art paint pouring tutorials, you'll know I start off with a little setup of everything going into play. So if you don't want to hear it all over again, feel free to skip ahead to the fun part. If you're new to my channel, I show you guys everything I use and give a brief explanation why in case you want to try for yourself or if you're just curious what all this stuff is. So Float Troll is something I typically use in my pours, which is just a paint conditioner that fills in as my pouring medium. It helps with the movement of my paint, including self-leveling, add some neat detailing effects, and doesn't compromise with the binders or pigments in my paints. If you want to get some for yourself, just make sure you get your hands on the latex based version. I will say that it is highly advised to strain the flow troll because it can have some lumps. So if you want to invest in a flow troll strainer cap, that will make life so much easier and that will also be in the description where to get it. Or you can just use some cheesecloth, whichever works better for you. My torch is to pop any air bubbles in my paints, which can also add to some of the neat detailing effects as well. And my handy dandy paper towels are just nice to have within reach for any cleanups. Here's my paints, which are just cheap craft paints. And you may see that I have a few brands. Anyway, I'm using Lake Blue, Bright Gold, Black, and Metallic White. The two squeeze bottles behind my paints are the paints I'll actually be using because they're leftover from a previous pour. So I need to use them, which are Bright Gold and Black. But I wanted to at least show you the brand. Here's my little scale to measure out my paints and additives, which in this case is just Paint and Flow Troll. And then here's my silicone mixing cups. Totally love them. Very eco-friendly and helps minimize my cleanup. They're itty bitty three and a half ounce cups because I only need a little paint. But I'll be sure to include the link in the description where I got them. The spoons are just baby spoons that I use to mix my paints. Also reusable and I got it at my local grocery store. These are my palette knives, which are technically painting knives. But I have two of them because I'm not sure if I'm going to use one or both for my tree. But for sure I'm going to use the one with the more rounded edge. And next to it is a plastic putty knife or spatula that I got at Lowe's that I'll be doing the swiping with. And by the way, if you get yourself into pouring, you'll find out that you'll be getting several things from there or Home Depot, like Floatrol, which they have a 10% military discount that's always helpful because that just means we have more money to save for more paints and canvases. Yay! And speaking of canvases, if you're asking, where's my canvas? I'm not going to use one. This is just an eight inch wooden disc that I got from Hobby Lobby a while back. It's been sitting in my art supplies closet and figured I need to use it already. Plus we're moving soon, so even more reason to use it. And as you can see, it's just sitting on some plastic cups for the stands. Lastly, I'm just using the top or the lid of a large Tupperware bin to catch any runoff paint. Okay guys, let's paint. 
Oh, and don't forget your apron. Okay guys, here I am. I am so ready to do this. My son is at school and I have the house to myself. So I'm going to start by just mixing the base color here, which is just the metallic white. And I did two parts of Floetrol to one part of paint. The consistency factor on this is like, uh, kind of like a mound on a mound on a mound. So it's a little bit more thicker than um, like the consistency that I have showed you previously, like in a Dutch pour, if I could tilt that more. Um, so, but, and with this lighting, I'm not even sure if you can really see the uh, color in the, um, the metallic, the metallic portion in, in the white. Um, really, really pretty. I'm hoping that when I do this, you can see with the lighting how it just kind of shimmers. But anyway, so that was metallic white and here is lake blue. Just kind of mix that up, mix and stir, mix and stir. Oh, you can see that consistency of so second. And this is just a little bit of paint. So for the, oh, low down here. So for the white paint, I mixed about um, two ounces, one and a half, almost two ounces because I'm gonna need more of the white. Whereas the blue here, it's just like, well, this isn't helping because the paint is, you know, from stirring the, the, along the edges of the inside of the cup, it makes it look like there's a lot more, but this really, it just almost barely covers the bottom. Like if you can kind of scrape and see the bottom. No, anyway, thought you would. But anyway, so like I said, it's just a very small amount because I'm just gonna need, you know, one or two little lines here and that is it. So. I'm just making minimal amounts. Um, there's pros and cons to making too much paint because you know, if you need extra for touch-ups or do-overs, it's all ready to go. But you know, if there's not enough, then you know, you're kind of pulling your hair out thinking, what am I gonna do now? So finding the in-between is always kind of tricky, but so I'm hoping um, by logging everything down that I've been doing will help me to understand um, better where I can be a little bit more generous um, on the paints or for my projects next time or where I need to cut back. So I think I'm okay. So, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start and I'm just going to pour the white down over my wooden canvas here. And I love these little cups because they have like a little spout on it too. So, you know, kind of just helps keep things cleaner, I guess when you're pouring. And I'm just gonna, this is actually on, you know, for two parts of flow troll, it's actually kind of really thick. So anyway, I'm going to take my little fabulous spatula here and just kind of push it around. This portion, I feel like it should have been on my cake turner, but you know, oh well. Let's see here. I don't want to push too much off the sides. I might just, yeah, no, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to probably end up using a brush, a paint brush, and just paint the edges here since the a router was obviously used to make that nice little trim on it but let me just get this kind of around I guess I can kind of tilt that too oh yeah that's thick oh my and each brand of paint is going to be different yeah that's not budging that's oh my gosh it's like pea soup um yeah so each brand of paint is going to have its own different consistency so if you're like a fan of Liquitex, you know, basics or something, you're gonna be pretty familiar with its, you know, consistency. But then if you switch over to like, you know, a craft paint, like um, you know, like a deco art or something, you're probably gonna notice it's a little thinner anyway, just because it's more watered down. I mean, it is a craft paint, but. All right, you know, I think this is good for now. I think I got it evenly covered. I just really wanna, and you wanna be gentle here, just really kind of make it, you know, just glide over the top of the paint. And the flow troll is nice because as I mentioned earlier, it's, you know, it helps with the self-leveling. So, you know, when you're doing exactly what I'm doing by, you know, smearing and touching and getting into it, it's gonna 
um, level out a lot nicer on its own. Okay, so let's wipe that off. And now I'm going to pour down some blue. Let that mix up. All right, so I'm gonna do blue, and I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna pour off of, um, actually, you know what, I'm gonna put this on the overhead angle here so you can see a little bit better. So let me put you on pause and change up the angle of the camera. There, that's better. Now you can see everything that I'm trying to do from an overhead view. Okay, so like I, as I was saying, I'm going to pour the blue and I'm gonna start like off of the wood because I wanna avoid like, you know, a big initial blob going on so that I have like a nice consistent line going down. And again, this is like still, well, this looks a little bit more runny, which is good, but I'm just gonna go down and pour straight line down and that, that's a little bit thicker up there than here but let me just I'm gonna try to even it out a little bit wee bit there there okay and then I think I'm gonna do black now as I explained earlier I have black already pre-mixed in a bottle so I'm just gonna do a little shaky shaky get that Good to go. Oh my gosh, of course I have a little pet hair. Ah. There we go. Okay. All right. It's like it's there and then, or it's not there and then it's there. I don't know, it's like magic. Same thing, I'm just going to pour Okay, and do it on this side. All right. And then I think I'm going to do the gold. Shaky, shaky, shake. Oh, another hair. My, oh, my goodness. Well, the heater just turned off, so maybe the air was kicking up little fine dust particles and pet hairs. You know, we have a Rottweiler. They don't shed a lot, but you know, pets do shed. All right, I'm gonna pour. Come on, come on. I thought I shook it up pretty good. Oh, there it goes, okay. And, oh no, please don't be stunning. Rag. I hope I can have enough for the other side. It's always hard to tell how much you have. And oh my gosh, I hope this isn't too, because it's like, <laughs> you can hear, it's like squirting out. Oh my goodness. This is, well, at least I know it's done. I won't have to worry about using it for any more pores. <laughs> okay, so this is totally not how I had in mind, just given the fact that the gold is like, it just was like, spooging out so oh, anyway all right we'll see how it goes of course pouring is never a project that you have you know this exact outcome in your mind it's just literally a surprise so we will see okay so now what i'm gonna do is i'm going to just take my little um putty knife here and i'm gonna try to get into the center of the blue line and i'm just gonna gently drag it across so i'm gonna start here just take my time. All right, and wipe. I should have my paper towel a little bit closer. And swipe. And swipe. Black is kind of heavy there. It's funny because I thought the gold would be a little bit more obvious, but you know, we shall see. Paint always dries or looks different when it is dried. And up in and out. And then I'm going to do 
do this. I'm going to turn it around here. Just I'm right-handed. I know some of you guys can just do things like from any angle, but I'm weird. I need it to be how it's going to work out best for me. Let me check my little camera angle. Well, I can move that up just a little bit. Is that better? Yes, good. Okay, now let's do it up again. And gently pull. Okay. I see some really cool effects here. So I'm anxious to see what it looks like when I use my torch. Okay. Just gently drag across. Gently pull and drag. And I don't care about these little open spots. I kind of think it adds to the look or design, I guess. I don't know. And gently drag. Okay. All righty. Torch time. Okay. Ooh. Set the house on fire. A little bit. I mixed some of these paints last night, so I'm not gonna. Ex I didn't expect to get like a whole thing going on, but all right, that's enough. Okay, now time to make the tree. Ah, <sighs> so. Let me get my white over here because I feel like I might need to dip my palette knife back in the white. Actually, I think I'm going to pour, excuse me, a little bit more white in the cup. That's the paint, not me. <laughs> okay, where's my spoon? Mix, 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 mix. Now, I'm not worried about, you know, adding more flow troll back into my paint or whatnot because the base of it, I got the design. I That's accomplished. Um, Now, I'm just putting extra white in the cup just in case I need an extra little paint to help drag because I don't want to drag. Like, I've already thinned it out here. Um, to get this design. So by dragging it with my painting knife even more, I don't want to drag it to the point where, you know, it's going right along the wood. So I'm going to start off by just making a little trunk. Kind of going like that. Okay, I need some more paper towels over here. I'm telling you guys, I may have an apron on, but paper towels are just nice to have on standby. Okay, so yeah, so I need to dip my paint, or dip my paint, dip my painting knife. And I'm just dipping in like this. If you can see, can you see? I should probably check to see if you can see over here. Okay. That's good enough. Okay, so I'm just going to, and this painting knife is just, I decided, like I said, I'm gonna just use the one for sure that has a more rounded edge. Oh, I can see the wood there. But the paint is going to flow right back in. Let me get some of that little base to this. And I am no pro in swiping here. This is all a learning experience for me. Um, and this is actually very foreign, like I said, because I am used to using brush strokes. And here I'm using a painting knife in a fashion that I am not used to. Oh, what is that? A lump? Now I guess I just need to, ooh, that was a close one. 
Not that it would have mattered, I guess, but you know. But now we are just, I think I might wipe that again when I'm done. That just looks, I don't know. I still gotta make up my mind. using the roundness here just to kind of create those and twisting my knife up at the edge just to kind of like thin it out some you know how branches go from you know thick the base to you know thin at the tips <laughs> yes puppy I swear she hears another puppy soul. She lets you know. Well, it is trash day too, and I just she'll about break my door down to go get that trash chuck. <laughs> okay. Um really liking this so far. It's pretty. Okay. I think I'm going to again just kind of fix that. Okay. Wow. Okay, now I think I'm actually gonna, I am gonna use my little other pinky knife. Where did you go? Here, okay. Okay, and just dip the tip in here. And then I think I'm gonna fix that to make it look more branchy. And I'm just wiping the blade off as I go. And then just as you can see, I'm just dipping my paint or dip. Oh my gosh, I said it again. <laughs> I'm dipping my painting knife into my paint and then I'm just dragging the tip along the canvas, like the edge. I just, I'm kind of like going flat and then twisting. And sometimes I'm not really doing the twisting factor just because I kind of want to maybe keep that portion of the branch or the trunk or whatever just thicker. Okay. It's definitely a lot more blue than I had in mind. Um, but I guess it's kind of nice because it does give it some background. Like it's the tree is not getting lost with, you know, so much white, I guess. I actually like this. This is really neat. I was actually kind of worried going, oh my gosh, I'm just going to make it a disaster. But, you know, you just take your time and just let your imagination roll and kind of see where it goes. You know, they say the sky is the limit, just like your imagination. There is no limit. Just dipping, dipping, dipping. Wow, that's pretty, man. I think it's pretty. You guys might have a different opinion, but okay, I think I'm gonna add some more white. What do you say we go down here too, yeah? Yeah. Okay. How about this side? Yeah, we don't want to make this side feel left out. Kind of like this black right here. That's like a little shadowing effect. I mean, maybe try to go over it. Well, I don't want to go too deep. The wood is right there. And then here, uh oh, just a little bit. Yes, puppy. Can we? 
Can we just keep our voices to ourselves right now or use an inside voice? Shh, hey. I'm sure I'm not the only one who has a dog that has to voice their opinion at all times. Okay, yeah, I think I need to get some more. This branch here is kind of bothering me because I feel like it's getting lost with the dark colors in it. So, but I don't want to, hmm, what to do? I like that. I don't really want, I know, maybe I'll go in. Hey, pup, you need to go. You're in my bubble. And you're around my expensive equipment. Thank you so much. There. Okay, guys, I don't think I want to mess with it too much more. Maybe this, that's just not looking good here. So try to do, I really like that black. I just don't want to lose, I think I lost it. Well, I don't know. No, it's still there, good. Maybe I'll try to widen this out there. Yeah, okay. Kind of, I can see some wood in the center here. I'm hoping, like I said, this the flow tour will help with that portion and the self leveling. Um, let's see if I can get more white. Just pour it on, or just maybe dab it. Yeah, there. Just fill it in and just kind of. Go upwards, just to kind of give it that, um, you know, the look of the trunk just extending from its growth. Okay, yeah, I probably should have just left that one white. Again, we'll see. Like I said, you know, imagination. There, I actually like that. Okay, yeah, that's good, that's good. A little white over here. Okay, looks well, like there. All right, guys, I'm I'm gonna stop messing with it. I think it's just, you know. All right, now I'm gonna get my knife, my little spatula and see. Oh, I don't know. Ooh, choices, decisions. Hmm. We'll see how that goes. I mean, it's kind of interesting. I'm gonna kind of make it look like the ground, you know? I don't know. Definitely unique. Oh, I gotta turn it around again because I'm just weird like that. Okay. Turn it. Ah, I almost dropped it. That would have been bad. Okay, is it back in this side here? Yes, yes, good. Okay. All right. Now. thinking oh my I have a very <gasps> you saw that right oh my gosh how did I miss that okay this might be a game changer here guys bummer Let me, uh, try to even it out here this side a little bit As good as I can get right here. This just is, I don't like this. Let's see if I fix that. 
Oh, yeah. I, I'm, I need to leave it. Oh, it's decisions, guys. Decisions. I feel like, you know, I'm signing my life away on a loan or something. <laughs> I just don't know what to do. Do I do it? Do I not do it? Uh, okay. But I want to say overall, I think it's, this is where I'm like, maybe I need to add more. Yeah, maybe I do need to go back to it. <laughs> Because I feel like this is, no, no, I'm going to go back into here and maybe clean this up here. Maybe kind of take some of that white out. You know what I should do? Yeah. Let's dip it in blue. That's going to help it give a little bit color back in there. I think, I think that's what it needs. Just kind of play with it, you know? And then this was one of my branches here. Oh, I don't want blue there. I like this here, this little, I can kind of maybe move it. Blend the blue. There. Okay, that's a little better. And I should do a swipe in here. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. Well, okay, you know what? I that's the best thing about, you know these types of projects you just know better for the next time but I am going to just do one mile I'm going to kind of even that out smooth those edge lines out just a tidbit more there I think I like that okay I think I like that edge better oh man I went right to the wood all right, I'll just go put some more white in that later, I guess. Yes? Okay. All right, guys. What do you think? Pretty cool. At least I think of, I think so. Oh, good. Oh, you know what? Torch. Yes, let's see if I get anything back from the torch. As far as like bubbles and cells coming out. Oh, yes! Yay! Good, good, good! Yay! All right, yes, those are a little weird. I'm not liking those, but I think I'm happy. Okay, I had to, I put you guys on pause because I cleaned this, this up a little bit, the, the rim of it, and I, I just, I don't know if that was a bad move or what because I just don't know what to do with it. It just doesn't look flattering at all. So that's another decision for later on um, after this dries. But um, I also, it, you may or may not notice, but I went back and I tweaked these lower branches right here. They just, I don't know, they, they didn't look like they come, they did not look like they came down low enough, at least this one. And this one, it just looked so blend it it was lost so I kind of had to like I don't know play with it a little bit more without losing you know all the lower details down here so yes I think I'm going to give myself a two thumbs up again I think I already told you that I was happy for a first timer little swipe project like this at least in this fashion because you know normally swipe art is um you know just one unidirectional you know, or you know bi-direction or whatever but typically they don't have extra little um you know neat details like this i'm not saying it's not been done before usually when like i said when swipe art it's just the swipe 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 and you kind of see what you get with all the colors and the blending and the cells and stuff and lacing 
Um, but I wanted to take it a step further and just see where I can go with this. I don't know, maybe call it the tree of life. I don't know. Well, I guess I should have made, you know, roots down here. Darn. Maybe the next, next project I will do that. And since I have experience in this one, I'll just be better for the next one. All right, guys. So stand by for the final product. All right, she's all dry and I really like it for a first attempt. It's no wall hanger, but it, turned, it did turn out well. And I like how I did that second swipe at the bottom, but I think that blue section there is kind of killing it. But overall, I like it. The metallic white did turn out nice, but this lighting isn't really doing much for that. Um, but I am anxious to do this on a bigger piece. I think this was too small, but I'm glad I used this wood already. Um, and the next time I'll definitely use a canvas, so maybe use a tidbit more of paint or I can tilt it some to at least cover the sides. Well, I come to think of it, my paints were just too thick this time. So, I mean, at least the white was. So I guess I should just make sure the paint is thinner next go around. But speaking of sides, I ended up leaving my sides with a thin coat of residual paint that I put on with a small brush and just left it at that. I thought more of a raw look would complement it better than trying to jazz it up and overdo it with other colors, making it just look, you know, too busy. All right, guys, this was super fun. I really enjoyed doing swipe art, but more than that, I enjoyed using the painting knives. Talk about an entirely different beast. Such neat tools to have. Yeah, I'm definitely going to do another one, but I think I'm going to do the Tree of Life version and just go to town on it, roots and all. Okay, so this concludes this painting, and if you liked the tutorial, please be sure to not only share it, but to also hit like and subscribe for more videos. But more importantly, remember to thank God for this opportunity and always paint from the soul.